Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for coming along. Now, my name is Dean Stokes. Just to give you a bit of background, I became a Google Certified Teacher at the end of last year. And I work in a secondary school and we migrated uh, to Google Apps in September. Um, and we've done some amazing things. Not me, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. It's not all me, it's all the staff in the academy and the students really love this as well. So what I wanted to give you today is just sort of 20 quick ideas, if you like, uh, for what you can do with Google Apps in the classroom. And this won't all be about Docs and Drive. Um, this is going to be about some of the other lesser known websites and tools that Google provide that you might not know about. And that QR code on the screen is a link to this presentation. What I'd really like is either during the presentation, once you get home, whenever, is to go and leave some comments by the slides. By all means, add to my ideas, build on them, uh, and let's start a bit of a conversation in the comments of the presentation. That would be really, really good. Uh, and if you miss this, then uh, I'll put it back up at the end as well. All right, so if we make a start, 20 things. Lots of people are scanning the, uh, scanning the QR code. I'll wait for you. It's a bit strange for me because last year I was just kind of wandering around here, uh, having my mind blown by all of the technology going on, and now I'm stood up in front of you. So it's good. Hopefully you'll enjoy this. Right, so we'll start then. Number one. Very quickly, let students work collaboratively on docs or presentations and peer assess using comments. So really, really simple. If you've ever seen Google Docs in action, you can have more than one person working on it. A student can share their work with me, and I can comment on it. Or they can share it with a partner. They can comment on it. And we have that dialogue going on then between the teacher and the student or two students together to keep improving their work. So because you can visit this presentation, I'm not going to get a chance to demo everything properly. You can go back and you'll be able to look at this and this will help you. So all we do is highlight a piece of work, click on comments to add a comment, and I can write my comment here. This was all in the last presentation as well. Really, really simple. So that's number one. Number two, use Google Forms to collect student feedback or complete end of unit assessment. Uh, now yesterday, there's a guy called Ollie Trussell. There's a link to his website at the bottom there. He's created a script. Uh, which does this all automatically as well. You can send a student a quiz in a Google form. They fill it out, and it will give them personalized feedback based on what they do. When Ollie showed me this, I just felt really inadequate because it is amazing. Uh, and, and it's all free. He's giving it away. So just go on the website and check it out. Here's what a form might look like. If you've never tried creating a Google form before, it's really, really simple. You choose the type of question you want. You put the question in, leave a bit of a description, if they need a bit of help, and then choose what kind, of what kind of answer type you want. Is it multiple choice? Are you going to let them write a paragraph? Uh, so I teach media. So name three generic conventions of the sci-fi genre. Put each one on a separate line. That would be my first question. I can keep adding questions. I can do branching as well. So if they choose yes or no on particular questions, it can go to a separate page of my, of my test or quiz. Number three, use Cultural Institute to get up close and personal with thousands of paintings and have a wander around the galleries. Now, I only found out about this myself in December. Uh, and this is just an amazing resource from Google that I'm going to show you in a minute after we've gone through number four, which is get students to create their own collections in Cultural Institute to critically analyze works of art. I'm going to show you what all this means in a second, but there's one more. Swim in the Great Barrier Reef or visit Stonehenge with Cultural Institute. We can't all fly to Sydney with a, with a group of kids or fly to Australia and visit the, the Great Barrier Reef. But Google has Street View, and they went underwater. So let me just give you an example of what we've got here. If I just go to Cultural Institute, and I'm going to start with the artwork. Now, this is split into three sections. We've got Art Project, Historic Moments, and World Wonders. For today, I'm going to just show you Art Project and World Wonder. But, but just go on here and have a look around. This is so new that there is new things on here daily. So it's worth checking out. If I go to Art Project then, uh, maybe Van Gogh or Van Gogh, whatever you prefer, I can take a search. And we can see the Van Gogh Museum is on here in Amsterdam. And I can click on there uh, and view some of the paintings from the gallery. Now, even better than that, I can't just look at them. I can also zoom right into the brush level detail. You wouldn't even be able to look this close if you went to the gallery. If I zoom in, and this is called Gigapixel. It's blurry at the moment. I can move around the picture, just have a look around it, and see exactly what it looks like. We're so close that you can see the cracks in the paint. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. 
Imagine using this in an art lesson to look at something that you, you can't even go and visit because you've got to go to another country, but I can look at it on my screen. Now, I can choose more than one work of art, and I've got a couple of saved, a couple that are saved in here. Maybe I want to compare them. Um, let's just go back over here. So I can add this to my compare section. i just mouse over and scroll along, and the resolution's a bit tight on here. Just add that as well. And I can look at these side by side now and do exactly the same thing. So I can zoom in just like I did before, but side by side. OK, so that's kind of just the beginning, really, looking up close and getting up close and personal with those works of art. Let's go a bit further, then. What if the student uh, wanted to create their own gallery? Let's go back here. There's a link here for my galleries. Uh, now, here's one someone else has created on this account. If I just click in there, I can go through. Maybe I'm looking at pointillism, for example. Might be a, a certain style of art that I'm doing. Find lots of different artists that have done that. Put them all into a gallery. And I can add a description at the beginning. I can add some text uh, to any of these. I can add a video caption as well. So could you get the student to have this piece of work in front of them next to a piece of work that they've done, record a video about it, and then have that here? And instead of collecting in that big art book that where they've critically analyzed these works of art, they've done it all here in Cultural Institute. Pretty cool, I think. Definitely worth checking out. Um, so let's go back. So that's Art Project. If I click down here, let's go to World Wonders. And I said to you about the Great Barrier Reef. So let's just search Great Barrier Reef. Here it is. And believe it or not, We've got Street View. And the, way, the same way that I'm in Street View underwater here, you can do that to the gallery. You might have noticed at the Van Gogh Museum, I can have a walk around it and look at the things on the walls as well. Um, again, I can't see all the arrows because of the resolution, but we'll give it a go. I can move around this just like you would if you were walking along the street um, on Google Maps. Right, let's carry on then. Number six. Request an invite to Google Open Gallery to show off your school's artwork. So Cultural Institute at the moment is only open uh, to galleries that Google have agreements with to put their content there. They've just started a thing called Open Gallery, where anyone can request an invite, i.e. a school, to put their artwork on there. So imagine that art exhibition that you hold every year where all your parents come in, they look at all the artwork. Well, now you could do that online any time of year. Worth requesting an invite. I put one in for my school. Do it, you're going to get an email at some point inviting you to join. Apologies if I'm going a bit quick. I've kind of set myself a challenge to get through 20 in under 20 minutes. So, number seven, ask students to create a Google site to document their work from each lesson and use the comments function again to facilitate assessment. So, lots of you might have seen other teachers doing e portfolios. That is exactly what I'm on about. So, here's what it might look like. This is just a really simple site that one of my year nines made. Um, and this page is about camera shots. You can see they've organized all their pages into sections. And then another student has gone on and commented on their work. They can then comment back, make edits to the page. I can go on. They've shared the site with me. And I can put my feedback on there as well. You know, this is all the things that we're kind of already doing in books. None of this is to replace what you're doing, but it's to enhance the learning. Let's not just think we're using technology here for the sake of it. I'm not just going to start using Google Docs because I want to use technology in my classroom. I'm going to use it because it's going to add something to what I'm doing. If they create a website, when they leave, this is still going to be there. This is going to be there if they start in year 9, when they finish in year 11, before they sit their exam. They can use this to revise. There's loads and loads of potential here. Number eight, use the revision history to see how students are progressing over time. Uh, so this is, works in spreadsheets, presentations, and docs. And you might have seen this in the last demo as well. If a student clicks on the gray text up at the top, when it tells you when the last edit was made, we get this bar on the right, which is the revision history. I can click on one of these revisions. And if it's one or more students, it will show me exactly what that student did. So here, E, as we're going to call him, did this chunk of text on the 5th of November. And if I wanted to, I could restore it. If I restore this one, I'm not going to lose everything before it. It's just going to add a copy of this to the top of this list. You can't lose anything. 
uh, like somebody said earlier on, if you try and delete anything on your drive, you've not actually deleted it. Google makes it very hard for you to actually delete something. That's a good thing. How many of us have deleted something by accident in the past? Site sources in Google Docs, the easy way, is number nine. So imagine I've got a document, then this is a, an investigation from an A-level student. We've highlighted some text here that they've written. I click on Tools, Research. If you've not seen this before, that pops up this bar on the right, which is like a search uh, box in effect. And I can search the whole web. I can just search Google Scholar. And if you haven't heard of Google Scholar, it just looks at um, papers and, and research papers and things that have been done. That's a good, a good place to go. And if I put my mouse over, I get these options here. So I can preview it. I can insert the link, or I can do a citation. And when I click that, it's going to add a little number here and put a footnote in for me. No work required. If I go back and delete that citation from here, it will delete the footnote as well. Really cool. Number 10, research how phrases have been used over time with Ngram Viewer. Um, now, you could do this in any subject. Maybe you want to analyze the statistics in maths. You might want to look at something in English. I mean, the, the sky is the limit. So here's what it looks like. Very, very simple. Here we've searched for Albert Einstein, Sherlock Holmes, and Frankenstein. If you didn't know, Google has scanned hundreds and thousands and thousands of books, uh, and they've also picked out the words. They've, it's not just a PDF file. They've used optical character recognition to find what the letters are, to find what the words are. So I can see then that Sherlock Holmes obviously come about in the 1880s. Frankenstein was talked about right way back in the 1800s. Number 11. Take students on a virtual trip around the world with Google Tour Builder. Now, this is phenomenal. At the moment, this only works, ironically, on a Windows machine or a Mac. Um, but this is a great, great tool. Um, if I just skip, this is an example of one that a charity's made um, about the work they're doing, uh, defeating poverty. And so this is just one section of the tour. And you can see here's all the different places that I'm going to visit. And the map will move, just using a Google Earth plugin, the map will move around and show me all these different places. So let's say you can't go on a trip. Maybe you're in a low-income area. The students can't afford to go somewhere, but you want to take them there virtually. This is perfect. And once you've done this once, it's always there. So don't feel like, oh, well, I need to do more and more work. Where's all the time going to come from for this? Do it once. It's going to stay there in your account forever. Right, number 12. Use YouTube annotations to create quizzes, interactive quizzes. Now, I've got an example here. I'm not sure if the sound is on, so let's have a look. The sound isn't on, but she's saying something like, in Spanish, what is the correct spelling of catorce? And I think it's the second one. So using annotations, I can click on one of these, and it links. There we go. I got it right. And then I'm going to get the next two. question in this video. So you can create a series of questions. Yes, it is going to take a little bit of time when you first do it. But again, once you've done it once, it's there forever. Great as an end of, to end of topic quiz, uh, something a bit different maybe to write anger down or using a form, use videos. And we go on forever. Uh, cool, so we're on number 12. Next up. Work as a team to improve the Google Maps experience in your area using Google Map Maker. I'd love to give you a demo of this, but it's quite intricate. It would take me a little while to get all around it. Down here are two links, one to Map Maker, one to Mapmakerpedia, which is a great site to help you work out what to do. You could get students to help you map golf courses, help you map the school grounds, uh, remove roads that aren't meant to be there from your local area. Maybe a building's moved, you get them to do that. Could be good for geography, mapping. Um, and it might fit elsewhere in the curriculum. That's kind of up to you to decide. I just want to spark some ideas, but don't forget it's about the learning. Please don't think that I'm just stood here saying, use all these great things because it's technology and you need to use technology. It's not. If, if this isn't going to work for you, don't use this one. Yeah? But give it a go. Just have a try, then you'll know whether it'll work. Get creative using drawings in Google Drive. Probably one of the most underused um, areas of Google Drive, in my opinion, and I love it. This is particularly good with younger students, I think, for visualizing a story. So um, here's a few examples. They wrote a story. I got them to draw their characters in Google Drawings. Uh, and I had a feeble attempt at doing something very quickly last night. They're meant to be clouds and birds. Um, 
but really powerful. And it, this isn't just shapes and fills. You can use a line tool uh, and draw nice curved things. And it's, it's very customizable. It might look very simple. But you can do lots of things with it. And the kids love it. At number 15, then, use Google Hangouts to go on a virtual field trip with connected classrooms. If you've not used the Google Hangout before, um, here's a few examples of these field trips that connected classrooms have done. Uh, and if you can't make it, a lot of these are in American times. If you can't make it, um, you can watch it back. All right, so it's always worth a look. I've got to rush through because I'm running out of time. Use Google Maps Engine to plot data on a map. Now, this is a really great tool that I want to show you, so I'm going to very quickly speed through it before I get told to get off the stage. Um, if I go to Maps Engine, I can create a new map, and I can use data that I've collected. So I've got a spreadsheet of data uh, from a questionnaire that I held with people, and it's on my Google Drive. It's this one. Uh, and it's going to ask me, what, what bit of data do I want to use for it to plot the different areas on the map? Well, I want to use what is your favorite city in the world, because that's where they've named a city. And now, what do I want to use as the title that shows up? Well, I'm going to do it by the people's last names. OK, it's going to take a second. It's going to plot all of those people's favorite cities on this map, slowly. There we go. Uh, and I can skip around this now. So let's have a look who liked London. Uh, Hill, whoever Hill was like London, if I can click over here. Um, Jones liked Istanbul. Now, really quickly, I can change the style of these. Of these. So let's say um, if I go to, sorry, style here, I can change the style by data column. So let's go to gender. And let's say that female, stereotypically, is going to be pink. And male is going to be blue. And I can see now what the females and what the males chose. Well, that was very quick. Three minutes. Where are we up to? 16, cool. Create a virtual tour of your school by uploading Photospheres to Google Maps Views. If you've got an Android phone um, or just a DSLR camera, and you can take pictures in a big circle around yourself, you can then upload them to the web. You can put those on your website and have it as a virtual tour around your school. You don't need to do that. Get the kids to do it. They have something fun to try. 18. Search for patterns and use the sketches and information to improve understanding. Really, really good uh, for design and technology. Google has a patent search engine, google.com forward slash patents. Uh, and this is where you get all the sketches, a bit of information about it, who put it in there. Number 19, analyze the data from Google Zeitgeist across the curriculum. Google gathers all the data about all the stuff that's been searched over the years. Find out what the most popular is. Do something with it. I don't know, maybe if you're a maths teacher, do some statistics analysis. Um, maybe you're social sciences and you can talk about why someone's searched that. Why have the nation been searching that particular thing? And finally, just in time, number 20, encourage students to enter the Google Science Fair. This opens on February the 11th. It's a worldwide initiative. Last year, one of the girls that won a prize um, made plastic from banana skins. I would have no idea how to do that. But that you start on a local level, then you go to regional, and so on and so on, and it builds up. So do it. If you've got some particularly gifted students in science, why not get them to sign up for the Google Science Fair? That's it from me. Don't forget, you can access this presentation at any time. Scan the QR code. I'd really love it if you leave some comments on the presentation. Let me know what you thought, and add your own ideas. And then hopefully, we can all build on this and work on it together. I'm not going to delete it. It's going to stick there forever. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Dean Stokes. If you've got any questions, I'll be milling around here. Feel free to come and say hello, and I'll do my best to help. Thank you very, very much.